Yeah. All right, I'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Coleman, roll call directors, please. Mr. Butler. Present. Mr. Coleman is here. Mr. Hallinan. Present. Mr. Holtham. Mr. Cranick. Present. Slavasi. Present. Mr. McHale. Present. Mr. Suma. Present. Mr. Morocco, also present. present, or Superintendent Marichak, Mr. Lapaka, and Attorney Dempsey. Okay, the floor is now open for public discussion. Mr. President, I have some virtually. Mr. Marichak, proceed. I'm going to read them, and if anybody would like to comment, just slow me down and I'll do my best to try to come up with some answers. First, I would like to say that at the beginning of the year, the DSD had done a wonderful job with the hybrid plan that was in place. Even though there were a couple of positive cases, the efforts that were in place did not cause the school to shut down. Then the state decided to change the rules, making it harder to follow. The DSD decided to voluntarily close because if you did not meet one item on the list the state would close the school and shut down winter sports. So in essence, you close the school in order to save the sports, even though it meant all students would miss out on in-person learning. Now the plan to reopen the junior senior high school has been pushed back and why? Because of the positive cases all stemming from those sports. So in essence, you have denied all students in-person learning for a handful of students in their sporting events, which ultimately was suspended. I thought that no more schools were the were first and foremost for learning and sports were just an extracurricular activity that came from Nicholas Barczyk, 806 William Street. And I just want to say that that's not 100% accurate. What happened is uh, when they went to the designation of substantial, uh, the recommendation of the Department of Health and the Department of Education was to go to all virtual. I went to the board with that recommendation just to stay consistent with PDE and the Department of Health. And this board had the wisdom to say, wait a second, things aren't so bad yet. We stayed open for an additional two weeks. Then they issued something called an attestation, which was required the signature and the attestation, the guarantee of myself and the board president. At that time was Mr. McHale. And um, there were several options. None of them had anything to do with sports, but if you did not reply and return the attestation form by the date PDE and the Department of Health requested, their response would be that you could not participate in sports. So again, I'm commissioned by PDE. I felt it was irresponsible not to return the attestation. And my option was the second option, which was to go to an all virtual. At the time the cases were ticking up, we were above the threshold for what was uh, dictated to us for the size of our school. That's why I signed it that way. Uh, I don't remember any discussion about staying open because of sports. And I just do want to state because this will continue in some of the themes and the other ones. Every school district in the state of Pennsylvania participated in, in, in winter sports. I'm not saying that because everybody was doing it makes it right. But at the time that the sports were starting, it was manageable. Um, Never was it presented by the superintendent or to this board that you have two choices. One of them is you participate in sports and you forego academics or you take academics and shut sports down. It was the hope of the superintendent and the recommendations that were given that we could do both. It was never as black and white as, well, this group of students is more important than that group. That wasn't the mentality. I don't know if anybody or any other board members want to comment on that. If not, I'll move on to the next one. Good morning, Mr. Merchek and DSD school board members. My name is Deanna Descindio Hakus, and I live at 602 North Bromley Street in Dunmore. I'd like to comment and ask a question related to the remainder of the school year. First, let me say that I'm always proud of to be a Dunmore Buck, and I appreciate everything you do for our students daily. It is a tough job, and the decisions are never easy. I would also like to say thank you for curtailing the sports 
uh, acknowledge this was a difficult decision for you and all, and I feel for the students and families impacted by keeping everyone in the community safe is important. And I think I thank you for making the decision you made to ensure everybody's safe. A question to Mr. Marichek and the DSD board is number one, what is the timeline for returning to this, the district to full-time in-person instruction? There is no time, if there is no timeline and the current hybrid model continues, would it be possible to start adding in-person instruction on Wednesdays and possibly alternate between group A and group B each week so the students would have in-person instruction two days a week in week one and three days a week in week two or vice versa. Lastly, I would say the children need to be back in school. The virtual world is wonderful, but not every day and the kids are falling further behind. I know not everyone is vaccinated, but it's not just schools that face the issue. My own job is returning to in-person work next week and we are not socially distanced, but follow the precautions recommended and most of our organization has been live in person working in the production setting since day one of the pandemic. It was scary for all, but we did it and got through it. Let's prove how great we all know Dunmore is and get our kids back to school so we can continue the strong education and athletic programs we have always been so proud of at the Dunmore community. I know we can do it. Nanticoke and Dallas and Valley View are doing it in the next few weeks, so let's show them we can do it. Thank you for the, for the time. Um, I, I will make a comment about the timelines. Uh, we are going back hybrid Monday with our elementary, the following Monday with uh, the secondary school provided. Uh, our cases continue to go down. Knock wood, we haven't had one in three days. I don't know if people are, are not reporting because we're not in any situation in person, but if all goes well, the following Tuesday, we go to zero and zero cases unless something new is brought up. That being said, we are targeting the week after Easter, the 12th of April for a full return, probably tentatively four days a week because we still have a good number of kids that are going to be virtual, but we need planning time. That is not set in stone. That all depends upon our numbers. If the numbers are not below the threshold by our attestation in our criteria for PDE and the Department of Health, we cannot go back to school until those numbers are where they need to be. Vaccination, just about every teacher and staff member in our school district who wants it has gotten it, so we're in good shape there. That should not be an issue. Again, I said this to the board the other night, when we built most of our plans moving forward, it was the assumption from the Department of Health and the Department of Education that younger children weren't carrying or getting the virus, that seems to be a little different right now. It's not hopefully not going to stop us, but we do need to take those those facts into consideration before we move on. Any questions or comments before I move on? John, those dates are March the 15th and the 27th. That's for hybrid return. Right. And then I'm targeting tentatively in-school instruction for everybody with the anticipation that CDC is going to come out with some different uh, spacing guidelines, but we would look the week after Easter to start full go in the elementary in the following week over here, provided our numbers are where they need to be for the threshold for the matrix that we need to follow. Thank you. Uh, moving on, many of you, many of you sign in, many of your sign in times are outrageous. Sometimes I get a Google Classroom notification from Principal Lucas at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. It brings me to the point where I ask you, why are you making us get up by 8.30 a.m.? Studies have shown that teenagers are more aware of cognitive abilities, improve ability to study in the journal science advances. Most teenagers are chronically sleep deprived. One strangely postponed to lengthen adolescent sleep is to delay secondary school start times. That would allow students to wake up later without shifting their bedtime, which is biologically determined by the circadian clock, resulting in a net increase in sleep. The Seattle School District delayed the secondary school start time by nearly an hour. We carried out pre and post test research study and show that there were increase in the daily median sleep duration of 34 minutes associated with 4.5% increase in median grades of the students and the improvement in attendance. And, and that's pre-pandemic. During a pandemic, we could be 
told, we can't be told to sign in by 8.30 just to ultimately have our, all of our work done in two hours. And before you say that changing the time of the schedule is a burden and will complicate matters even worse, or we don't know the situation of other families, all these things are false. Because if you change the time to 8.30, then you could change it to nothing. Because taking attendance is unnecessary because even when I don't sign in, I still do my work. Signing in does not prove you did the work for the day. It proves nothing except we are all sleep deprived and forcing us to wake up early does not solve the problem. As the pandemic grows in the country and the number of cases increase, scientists notice the pattern of rising depression and anxiety in Americans. When the cases, when the case dropped, anxiety and depression also dropped. Looking at the graph of uh, depression and anxiety rates in COVID cases without a title, you won't be able to tell which is which according to Vox.com. And according to a recent post on Instagram by UNICEF, afraid, lonely, anxious, according to UNICEF, the COVID-19 pandemic is taking a de devastating toll on children's mental health. Governments must give this issue the attention it deserves and dramatically increase investment in the vital services that children need and deserve. My final statement is we need to go back to learning the way we did when the pandemic started. According to the study in the journal Nature, when you let people randomize a situation, it becomes more efficient than if you are rules and protocols that govern a set situation. We need to start having no more sign-in times and having all assignments for every class due at the end of the day at 11.59 p.m. or some agreeable time every teacher likes, such as in last March when every teacher had us hand in work at the end of the week and optional Zooms because we aren't learning anything by going to them anyways. These are just issues we've been facing and it's more hard on us than you could imagine. But if it's one thing I'm certain of is that I like the learning conditions we used back in March and that is from Raj Gandhi. Just a couple of things I'm gonna say, Raj, uh, Mr. Hopkins and, and Mr. Lucas have reached out and said that they would like, if you wanna discuss some of these issues to come in, I will say we're not, we are not going back to what we did in March where the, per the state regulations, there was no accountability. We are compulsed, we need by law to take attendance every day. And our attendance has really improved since we started doing that, um, where we only have 3% uh, absenteeism right now. Personally, I don't think 830 is unreasonable. Every job I've ever had, you need to start at 830. And I know that's not just about an adult world and, and, and some of the studies you refer to are fine, but I don't think 830 is unreasonable. And uh, I don't know if any of the board wants to comment, but Raj, if you wanted to discuss this further, Mr. Hopkins and Mr. Lucas have invited you in to sit down and discuss the issues. Anybody? Mr. Chair, is it resulting in any truancy, like truancy court issues? We, like we, are, we are moving forward with that. And, and because of that, our, our our rates have really improved. Mr. Mr. Uh, Lucas is on top of it pretty good. So we were concerned at the beginning of um, virtual learning, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a good outcome, but it has improved steadily in terms of truancy and in terms of attendance. Moving on, if that's okay with everyone, Mr. Marichek, I'm writing you to tell you, you what you did in shutting down the sports program on March 5th was absolutely ridiculous and unwarranted. First of all, the PIAA had declared us winners on the, of the Nanticoke game due to forfeit. That should have been the end of it. We should have gone, then gone on to play Berwick Monday. I understand about the COVID, but our girls had quarantine and followed protocol. And that is all that is required for them to play. Many of the teams they are that are playing had COVID followed protocol are now playing like we should be playing now. What you did was wrong. You took it upon yourself and canceled all sports programs without conferring with anybody. Our girls worked so hard to get to where they were this season. And in the second, you took it all away. You punished them for following protocol. They did what they were supposed to do. They were cleared to play. You are an embarrassment to your title and to the community. You do not have our girls' backs. Shame on you, and I hope you are replaced with someone that can handle the job because you clearly can. That's from Anna Baugh. Couple comments, thank you for your comments, Anna, is that uh, the reality of it is, is we had 25 cases, 25 positive cases in, a, in, a, in two weeks in our junior, senior high school. And I want everyone to remember that we were not in school. Every one of these cases that was reported was 
an athlete of some way, shape or, shape or form. So there was a problem. Second of all, we were under investigation for a face mask violation from the Pennsylvania Department of Education the prior week. We did not get the finding until this week. We were formally reprimanded for something very minor. And if you go back and look at the attestation that both this time Mr. Hallinan and myself had to sign, we have to live by that. It basically revolves around two things. Following the face mask rules, which we were cited for, and the number of cases that you have, you need to follow the matrix laid out by the Department of Health and PDE. We were at, once again, 25 cases. Our threshold is six. We were four times the number. We tried our best to give the children, the students, the athletes a chance to finish their season. But at that point, something wasn't working and I felt it was a danger and I only recommended it to this board. I think they reacted um, responsibly, but that's where that decision came from. I don't regret it. And uh, I don't know if any of the board members have any comments. Chairman. Yes, I Mr. Mean. Craddock. If I, if I may add that Mr. Mirachek did not make that decision in a, a vacuum. The, uh, if, if you could have been a fly on the wall reading our emails back and forth and the texts and the phone calls of that day, uh, we were all very, very um, concerned about the way things were going. And upon Mr. Mirachek's recommendation, we decided to pull the plug on sports, which there's, you know, if we if we went on with it anyway, we would have been in violation umpteen different ways, and we would put more of our kids in jeopardy. So we're I, I, personally, I'm very, I'm very comfortable. You know, nobody wants to, put, you know, especially going through the making your way through the whole season, making the playoffs, and then having the, the carpet pulled out from underneath you. Nobody wants to see that. But unfortunately, it was by the, the laws of the PD and the. Uh, Department of Health, we were compelled to do that. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Mr. Marichek, who was that letter by? Anna Baugh. Can you spell the last name, please? B-A-U-G-H. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. Okay, moving yes, sir. on. Move on. Um, good evening. We are the parents of two children on the autism spectrum. Our boys are very different and have very different yet equally important needs. We know that school is the best learning environment for all students, but when it comes to students on the autism spectrum, their needs go above and beyond a typical student. These students have both academic as well as behavioral needs. And it is virtually impossible to accomplish one without the other. The routine and consistency that these students need to crave, need and crave is vital to their continued growth and academic advancement. It may seem trivial, but even just physically being in school, as well as all the all the routines that go along with it, are paramount to their success. They need to be able to look their teachers in the eyes and make the, those important connections. That does not happen on a Zoom call. On top of their everyday academic lessons, these students also require speech, occupational, and physical therapies, which are nearly impossible to accomplish virtually. Therapy requires much physical interaction, modeling, and feedback, while safety measures and precautions are still necessary during this time, this makes it even more important for these students to be in person for these therapies, as well as their academic lessons. The bonds and connections that these students make with their teachers, therapists, and paraprofessionals are vital to their success, to their progress, and we must reiterate that it does not translate via a Zoom call. The teachers and aides have been doing their absolute best with what they have been given this year but the very specific needs of the students, some of the most at-risk population, have been completely ignored. Instead, much time and consideration has been given to sports. Since the Dunmore School District, since this is the Dunmore School District, we should think, we would think that it would be this board, as well as the superintendent's priority to address the academic needs of all of its students, first and foremost. These students must be in school and their unique needs must be considered before any activity club or sport. We are thrilled that the district has finally recognized this by having them start back today. Please consider having the students in a full-time autistic support classes return five days a week. This population has lost so much in the past year and we cannot afford to lose any more. Thank you for, for your consideration in this matter. Sincerely, Dave and Bridget Humphreys. 
I agree with just about everything that's said, and, and that replies to all of our students. We're going to try to work as hard as we can to get everybody back in, in a full capacity. I understand the therapy, the therapies that were discussed. You can't you can't do them via um, any kind of a virtual offering. We don't want to be that way. Um, and and the cases nobody wants to, our children to get sick with with the number of cases. We just got to move forward and, and get the kids back to school as soon as possible. If, uh, there's no more comments. That's what I have. Good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Check. Any more comments? Any board members have anything they want to add? Okay. With that, we're going to move on to our regular meeting. To approve the minutes of the regular meeting from February the 17th, 2021. Motion by Ms. Labasi. So Second by Mr. Suma. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion that permission be granted to the following for the use of district facilities and equipment. The use of district facilities is subject to the conditions established by the Dunmore School District and may not conflict with any regular scheduled activities. Number one, the rotary drive through Easter Egg Hunt on April the 3rd, 21, at, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the DEC parking lot. Number two is the Dunmore Fire Department use of their athletic track on March 20th, 21, at 8 a.m. Motion by Mr. Cranick. So moved. Seconded by Mr. McHale. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to review the commission of incumbent Superintendent John Marichek. The renewal will be for a period of five years beginning July 1st, 2000, or 2021. I'm sorry. And ending on June 30th, 2026. This commission is awarded by the Secretary of Education and the Pennsylvania Department of Education. This commission is independent of the contract of the superintendent and is required by the Pennsylvania School Code. Motion by Mr. Morocco. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Butler. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion to accept the personnel reports. Motion by Mr. Coleman. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Butler. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion to appoint Jordan Marichek, volunteer junior high softball coach pending clearances. Motion by Mr. Morocco. So moved. Seconded by Mr. McHale. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to approve a stipend of $10,000 for the position of pandemic coordinator, which was assigned to Danielle Pensack at the June 24, 2020 or 2020 board meeting. This appropriation will come from the district's versus funds. Motion by Mr. Craddock. Seconded by Mr. Suma. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? On this uh, question, on this uh, motion, I'd like to thank Mrs. Pensack, who's done an outstanding job. I'm sure the rest of the board feels that same way. Uh, she did a lot of this work. Mr. Mayor, check, correct me if I'm wrong, is done uh, outside of the, school the hours. The amount of night and weekend work that, that Mrs. Right. Pensack She's has gone taken on. Far, right. She's missed children's birthday parties and family functions, and it's not just one weekend. It's been since last March, and, and she's done a fabulous She's done an outstanding job. I'd like to publicly thank Mrs. Pensack for her efforts. Uh, excuse me one moment. Motion, motion to appoint Kim Marquez, volunteer girls varsity track coach. Motion by Mr. Coleman. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Butler. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion to approve the 2021 2022 school calendar. Motion by Mr. Morocco. So moved. Seconded by Mr. McHale. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion, motion to approve the following payrolls, uh, February the 19th and March the 5th, 21. 2-19-21, $350,984.96. Mar 
March the 5th, 21, $369,914.06. That brings it to a total of $720,899.02. Motion by Mr. Kranick. Ooh. Seconded by Mr. Suma. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to accept the treasurer's report for the month of February 2021. Motion by Ms. Labasi. So Seconded by Mr. Coleman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to approve the attached resolution to enter and approve uh, Ron, Ron, I have a hard time pronouncing that, four letters. Regional Wide Area Network Service Agreement for the period of July 1st, 2021 through June the 30th, 2026. Motion by Mr. Butler. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Morocco. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to approve payment for a list of bills of $183,961.80. Motion by Mr. Morocco. So moved. Second by Mr. McHale. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to accept the activities report for the month of February 2021. Motion by Mr. Cranick. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Suma. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to accept the wave stack collector's report for the months of February 2021. Motion by Ms. Labasi. No. Second by Mr. Suma. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to accept the audit report for the fiscal year ending June the 30th, 2020, as completed by Murphy, Doherty, and Company. Motion by Mr. McHale. I'll move. Second by Mr. Morocco. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion to approve the attached contract with the Wright Center for School Physician Services. Motion by Mr. Butler. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Coleman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion to approve the stipulation for Lackawanna County assessment of property number 14705-030-02949. Motion by Mr. Coleman. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Butler. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, at this time, does anybody have anything on the new business? Yes, sir. Mr. McHale. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say today, I believe, marks the one year anniversary of our COVID crisis that we've gone through in the country, more so as a district here for us. Um, and since the beginning, I, I don't think anybody would have thought we'd be sitting here a year later like this. We all thought it'd be a couple of weeks. The president was telling us it was going to go away very quickly at the time. Um, it, it is it's ruined. Many lives cost a lot of lives. Um, uh, and I just want to say I'd like to, to thank the administration for their their help with, with going through this. I mean, uh, it was lucky enough to serve as president here from the beginning. Mr. Marichak and the staff held meetings. They did everything as we kept saying this. This everything we do is a hypothesis. We've never been down this road before. We're trying, we're trying to get it right. Um, and you can tell by the letters that came in there, there was people on every side of the issue. They wanted something here or something taken away or whatever. Uh, this has not been easy on the administration or this board. Uh, I'd like to thank them for their efforts, um, knowing that we may not be right sometimes, but we've got to make a decision. And I think we've, we've tried to do what's best for each each child and each member of the, of the staff for the school district. And I commend you, Mr. Mayor Jack, Mrs. Zapatka, and everybody for your extra efforts in this time of uh, crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kill. Uh, I'd just like to report that we met on a, uh, a revamping of our athletic discipline policy, and I'd like to thank Ms. Labasi, Mr. Cranick, Mr. Butler, 
Mr. Marichek and Attorney Dempsey for a very positive, very uh, fruitful meeting that we had. We're not uh, completed with it yet. Uh, Mr. Dempsey has, or Attorney Dempsey has to look into a few more matters. And uh, I want to thank you all for uh, your input on that, Mr. McHale, your Sunday morning conversations with me also. And we, uh, we're going to go forward. I'm sure Attorney Dempsey, as always, will guide us the way that we have to be guided on this. And I know we're going to meet again, but I just want to make it known that we have met on this. And uh, again, it was a very, very pr productive meeting. And I want to thank you guys for taking that time to spend that night and coming out to work on that. So thank you once again. To be noted that a Sunday morning conversation is very early for Mr. Hanlon. <laughs> most, most early for anybody. Well, I'm up at four. You gotta remember that. I'm up at four o'clock. Thank you, Jimmy. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, check superintendent's report. Yeah, I'd like to uh, report on some positives that we've had been we've been having uh, experiencing in the district. I'd like to congratulate one of our own staff members, physical education teacher Gianna Morocco. Gianna was voted the number one Zoom instructor in northeastern Pennsylvania. She was recognized by the Times uh, Shamrock Corporation and voted for by all of the folks in Northeastern PA. I wanna thank our staff for, for backing one of our own as, as, as we got the vote out and uh, we're very proud of Gianna. She does a great job for us and she's got a ton of energy and uh, she's the number one Zoom instructor in the area. Also, um, it's the time of year where we announce our WVIA Artist of the Month. Uh, we had two winners at Dunmore. We always are well represented. Uh, Emily Carey is a senior who won the award for, for art. And then we have Gia Levis, who was also a senior and she won for music. I wanna thank, thank and congratulate Mrs. Hogan, who always does a wonderful job with our students in getting their work and their accomplishments uh, noticed by, by everyone um, in, the, in the community. I wanna reiterate the thanks that uh, Mr. President Hallinan had for uh, Mrs. Danielle Pensek for her efforts with the flurry of recent activity Every weekend, wherever there's a case was reported, she has to contact the Department of Health and she's got to run uh, these line searches that take an awful long time. Along the same lines, I want to thank our AD Mark Finan, uh, who has to make the phone calls and kind of be the liaison with Mrs. Pensack to the actual family. Um, I want to report something pretty positive. Uh, for those of you that have been on the board for a while, We've been getting reports from Labella Associates. You'll remember they are the firm that does the groundwater samples out near what we know as the varsity pit stop. And they came on and, and they made a presentation here several times, but they came on to our property for the first quarter of this year. And there is no contamination whatsoever on any of our uh, the areas that they, they, they drilled on our property. So that's good news. Um, finally, I would like to professionally and personally thank the following organizations for helping make our district, our community, and our personnel, our staff, safer through this very difficult time. I'd like to thank Medicus Urgent Care, I'd like to thank Medicap Pharmacy, and I'd like to thank Rite Aid Pharmacy here in Dunmore for their efforts. And uh, I think you know what I'm talking about here, but they, they've done a yeoman's work and, and a great thing for our entire school community. That's the superintendent's report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Chuck. Motion to adjourn to meet in regular session or at the call of the chair. Motion by Mr. Coleman. So moved. Second by Mr. Butler. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Butler. I skipped one. I'm sorry. Motion to accept the president superintendent's report and make them part of the minutes. Motion by Ms. Labasi. Seconded by Mr. Silma. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nice habit. Motion to adjourn the meeting in regular session or at the call of the chair. Motion by Mr. Coleman. Second by Mr. Butler. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Sabbath meeting is now adjourned. Thank